Yo, what's up guys, it's Shay here. A few months ago I did a video talking about the best weapon in BRM5. Well, a lot of updates and changes have happened since then, so here's the updated version. Before we get into it, be sure to subscribe. I have worked insanely hard on this video. Thank you guys. I've decided to stick with the original video's theme of three different weapons. I did this because not everyone in the game will have thousands and thousands of credits to spend. We will be discussing weapons in two categories. The first being open world applications. Following that, we will discuss the PvP game mode. Let's get right into it. Up first on the open world list, we have the FAL. This weapon is the cheapest in the battle rifle category. It costs 1500 credits, that means you can unlock it immediately. This weapon has a massive damage stat of 113 to the head, 64 to the torso, and 45 to the limbs. That is an insane amount of damage for 1500 credits. The only other weapons that can come close to this are high caliber weapons such as the Scar H or the sniper rifles. It has a fire rate of 600 rounds per minute and a base mass of 5.32 kilograms. I chose the FAL over the Scar H because, well, while the two are very similar, the FAL costs much less. This leaves the player with room to purchase attachments and make the weapon even better. For the build shown in the video, I use the Polymer Stock Aero Handguard, Summit Vertical Grip, Multi-Caliber Suppressor, and the 6X MGO Sight. The FAL does have some drawbacks though. First off, it has an insane weight. For this weapon, I kept my distance and used the single fire feature to give myself the best chance. I am not outrunning enemies with this, so I would be taking out instantly if I got up close. It also has some high recoil, so I used it on semi-auto. Up next we have the Mark 18. It is listed as a carbine on the wiki and costs 4100 credits. It has a base damage of 77 to the head, 38 to the torso, and 28 to the limbs. It doesn't pack as hard as a punch as the FAL, but it has a fire rate of 775 rounds per minute to balance that out. I chose the MK18 because of its price and stats. The MK18 has a base mass of 3.191 kilograms. In the video, I used the Bravo Stock 30 round ER mag, Mark 8 handguard, Summit Virgil Grip, Ironclad Laser for funky effects, 11.5 Government Barrel, War Pig Muzzle, and the 1X TRX Sight. The final mass on this build is nearly 4 kilograms. For an assault rifle that packs this much punch, it is extremely light and offers a lot of customizations. This weapon excels at close to medium ranges, but it can also hold its own at longer ranges. The Mark 18 has very high bullet velocity and a high range. This allows you to stand a chance at this longer ranges. I don't see many drawbacks to the MK18. It will get the job done and it isn't insanely expensive. At 4100 credits, you get more than what you're paying for. Last up in the open world category, we have the M2010. The M2010 has the powerful stats of 190 to the head, 112 to the torso, and 71 to the limbs. If you land your shot in a good area, you will take your target down. The M2010 costs a hefty 17,000 credits, but it is worth every bit in my opinion. It has a mass of 5.4 kilograms, and with the max build, it will be around 8 kilograms. This is one of the heaviest weapons in the game, so you'll be moving slower than a slug. But with such a powerful weapon, it has to be balanced somehow. It wouldn't be fair for you to run a Mach 10 with this weapon. It is a sniper rifle, so you should keep your distance from the enemies. The slow fire rate prevents you from running and gunning with this weapon. I believe the only drawback is what I just now mentioned. You move very slow and it fires slow. But you can take any enemy on, and this weapon will give you a massive advantage. Just keep your distance and you will win any engagement. I put the M2010 as the end goal of sorts for open world. It is everyone's dream. A high powered sniper rifle that gives you the satisfaction of hitting an enemy dead on and dropping them in one shot. Let's go ahead and move over to PvP. First off, PvP is a different beast than open world. Most of the PvP maps will focus around fast paced action rather than open world slow and methodical approach. The weapons on this list feature amazing stats for their given price. It is a shame to say this, but the AS Val will not be featured here. But I gave it an honorable mention since at one point it literally broke the game. It was so strong that it has received the largest nerf in BRM5 history. I won't go over its stats in this video, but just know it will always hold a special place in my heart. The first weapon on the PvP list is the L8582. This weapon. This thing. So you remember how the AUG was busted when it first came out? Yeah, they, they kind of did that again. The L8 has a price of 2500 credits and does 88 damage to the head, 46 to the torso, and 34 to limbs. Thankfully, there's no extended barrel on this weapon because it would be able to two-shot nearly everywhere. The build I am running in the video is the A3 handguard, summit virtual grip, threaded barrel, warp pig muzzle, and the 4X ACOG sight. This build gives this thing nearly zero recoil, so your enemies really understand what it's like to be burned alive. This weapon gives so much for the price of 2500 credits. The AUG A3 does have 10 more DPS, but the price of the AUG is higher. So the L8 snags the third spot. The second weapon I have chosen for PvP is the Scar Age. Now I may lose some of y'all here, so just listen to my explanation. Scar Age costs 3150 credits and has a DPS of 114 to the head, 61 to the torso, and 43 to the limbs. While having this insane damage, it has a fire rate of 600 rounds per minute. It takes two well-placed shots to take out your target. 
This weapon can be used in two ways. You can build it for speed, or you can build it for Chad levels of recoil. You can lower this weapon's recoil from 59 to 50. 50 recoil is pretty hefty, but for this amount of damage, it's insane. If you can't control the foul in open world, you can control the Scar H in PvP. Just sit back and wait for the enemies to come to you, or post up and play the clock to your advantage. Most players get tired of waiting and they rush each other. And this weapon is the perfect counter to the rush, allowing you to spam GG easy at the end of your games. Don't do that. This weapon has a mass of 3.8 kilograms and, when using the Chad recoil build, it gets up to 6 kilograms. Who cares about moving like a whale when you can put people down faster than my grades in school? The Chad recoil build for the Scar H is the Summit Virtual Grip, 4X ACOG Sight, and the Multi Caliber Muzzle Attachment. Now let's move to the final weapon. You remember the AS Val? It was the honorable mention. Well, let's say it had a little bit of fun and had a kid. That would be the SR3M. I like to call it the Baby Val. The Baby Val comes in at a price of 4,450 credits and can deal 61 damage to the head, 38 to the torso, and 32 to the limbs. It has a mass of 2.7 kilograms, so you will quite literally be drifting around the entire map and clapping enemies in the process. When compared to the stats of the AS Val, it does fall a little bit short. When compared to the price of the AS Val, it is night and day. I don't know about you, but I would rather pay 4,450 than 22,000 any day. This weapon is lighter than the AS Val, does nearly the same amount of damage, and has less recoil and better ergonomics. If you want to ruin 12 year olds day, use the following build. 30x mag, MP railed handguard, semi vertical grip, suppressor, and a reflex sight if you need it. The gun may look goofy, but holy cow is it strong. In the PvP category, I do see the LA in the Baby Val, or the SR3M for you proper folk, being nerfed into the ground to balance it out with the other weapons. I believe that the open world choices will stay the same as those three weapons have been balanced recently, and I think they're in a pretty good spot. Please understand that all the weapons in this video are based on my opinions and my playstyle. If you have any questions or any opinions, please let me know in the comments below. I would be happy to discuss my decisions and hear out your opinions. How's it going guys? Uh, hopefully you guys have enjoyed the video. I've been working really hard on this right now and my voice is still very under the weather. I shouldn't have even been recording because my throat is killing me, but hey, we're pushing through. I just want to say a special thank you if you made it this far into the video. And if you have, I want you to comment, Gogurt? We like Gogurt. I love Gogurt. Because I just, I want to know who all watches to the end of these things. And also, I just hope this video has been helpful. And I hope it holds up to the standards of the previous video of this. Because it did extremely good. And I would love for this video to get the exact same love, if not even more. Because I think this one was better in my opinion. And I feel as if I gave better reasoning. And it wasn't exactly all biased. So, uh, let me know your guys' thoughts in the comments below. And thank you so much for just continuing to be there for me. Goodbye.